What is going on everybody, Nick Costa here and welcome to this video on how to set up the Roland TD-07 DMK electronic drum kit. Maybe you are a fellow educator who just got one for your school or you're a drummer yourself and just purchased one of these and have absolutely no idea how to set it up. Well, either way, this video will help you set it up from the ground up. I will go through the entire process from unboxing everything to setting up the rack system, installing all of the different trigger pads, finally installing the brain module and all of the wired connection so you would be ready to play by the end of this video. So enough of me talking, let's dive in. So step number one of setting up your TD-07 DMK kit is to get all of the components out of the box right here which will be done in three, two, one. So what we have here, if you take a look, starting from that pile over in the very far left, you have three of the same exact pads. So in this case, you're gonna see that there is some etching on it that says PDX-6. You have three of those. You have a different pad here, which is going to be for your snare drum. Then over here, this is your hi-hat controller pedal, your bag filled with instructions and a QR code for Roland. And then you have your three cymbal pads up here. So one will be a ride, one will be a crash, the other will be your hi-hat. This box right here is your bass drum component. So it's your bass drum trigger, as well as the platform for your bass drum pedal to attach to. Finally, you have your rack system in this box right here. So step number one with assembling this kit, you actually wanna get the rack system assembled first. So we're going to move all of this out of the way and start with that. All right, so now that all of the components are out, let's kind of just run through all of them really quickly for you. So going from your right to left, we actually have additional clamps in here. You have three of them in total. You also have one, two, three, four different L arms. These are, will be used for your three toms and snare drum. This next pack right here is actually your clips for the whole wiring harness which we'll get to towards the end. So since we actually don't need any of these right now, I'm gonna place them off to the side. Here is your rack system. And if you have seen any other assembly videos on a Roland electronic kit, if they have a similar frame, it's going to be that same exact setup. So you actually have this H beam right here in the middle and the side where you have your snare drum is actually the side where you have the two clamps located here. The other side for your ride cymbal, floor tom, everything else, will be the one clamp side. Now, as you go to assemble this kit, one thing you wanna keep in mind, you have two legs. The one leg, however, is slightly shorter than the other. So that shorter leg is going to go on the side where you are setting up your floor tom. Now, from there, you'll also notice that you have two curved pieces. Both of them have two clamps on them already. And then finally, on the far left side, we have our three different cymbal stands. You'll notice that one is slightly taller than the other two. Now moving forward with this video, I am going to set this rack up for a traditional right-handed setup drum set. If you are left-handed, you're just going to flip it around. Okay, so step number one, you're gonna take that H-beam in the middle and you're gonna make sure that the end that has the two clamps is actually facing the left side. You are going to loosen the top one and you are going to have that come outwards because that's where the curved bar is going to attach. The bottom one is for your snare drum. So you are going to loosen that and you're gonna have that face towards you or your drummer. Now, from there, you're going to take the short pipe right here and you're gonna notice that on one end, it is closed off and on the other end, it is open. That open end is what is inserted into that connection. Now, if you can't get this pipe to attach, you just need to take a drum key and loosen up that tension rod. That will open up the connection so it can be inserted. Just make sure that you tighten it down afterwards. Same thing on the right side here. We're gonna flip that around and be good to go. From there, you're going to take one of your curved bars, doesn't matter which one, and you are going to insert it into that top connection on the left side. You wanna make sure that when you are doing this, however, that curved portion is actually going away from your drummer during this setup. Now, before you actually go with tightening anything down, you wanna check both of your legs and you wanna find the one that is taller and that's the one that you are going to set up on the left side. So you're gonna notice H-beam is set up, 
snare drum connection is all good to go. Your curved bar again is going away from you. And then that taller leg is here on the left side. You're also going to notice that this is a little lopsided. So what you're actually going to want to do is take your drum key, loosen this tension rod here, and that's going to shift this whole thing downwards. We want to make sure that both of the legs of the H beam in the middle are sitting nice and flat. You're going to notice that as soon as I start to lower it, both of those legs on the H beam are now sitting nice and flat. And to make sure that the base of this leg is also sitting flat, you simply can just turn it and then tighten it down with your drum key. So now that that side is set up, let's go ahead and set up the other side. So I'm going to slide the rack over. Once again, you're going to take that curved connection piece and insert it into that bracket right here. Again, if you're having a difficult time, take the drum key, loosen up that tension rod. And again, you want to make sure that that curve is facing away from you. Now, take that shorter leg, insert it on the other end, which once again, most likely going to have to loosen up a tension rod and you are set up. Now, once you have all of that set up, you want to take a look at your bases of all of your connections and you want to make sure that they are sitting flat on the ground. If they are curved or doing anything crazy, you want to make adjustments. So you're going to notice here that it is actually leaning towards this snare drum connection. And if I actually flatten out the legs of the H beam, then all of a sudden my connection all the way on this side is actually off of the ground. So what I will do is take that drum key and make those adjustments to make sure that that leg is actually on the ground. Now, once you have it down as a good rule of thumb, all of the legs are nice and flat. Go ahead and tighten everything down for now, and then you'll make some minor adjustments moving forward. Now, once this is set up, what you actually want to do is turn it so the H beam is on the ground. You're going to remove one of those leg bases. That way you can attach the bass drum trigger to the post. So you will notice again, this big box right here, you want to go ahead and take everything out of it. This is your bass drum trigger. You're going to also notice that it is oblong because you can actually set up a double bass pedal. Now, when you are setting this up, you want to make sure that the connection that goes on the pipe is actually on the right side. If you're looking from the drummer's perspective. Now from there, you're going to open up and you will see there is a plate for your bass drum pedal to attach to. Also in that box, you have some additional clamps here. Here's the clamp that you are actually going to use for this foot plate here. It gets inserted like so, and then you can slide that on to that beam. Once you do that, you can reinsert the rubber foot for that leg, move the boxes out of the way, and pick the whole rack back up. Now, one thing to keep in mind, inside of that box, you are going to see this connection right here. This is actually for the brain module that is going to go on the leg that's to the far left if you're setting this up for a right-handed setup. Once you have all this configured, you can then make any adjustments you need to, making sure that your bass drum trigger is centered as well as your foot plate. And so now that the rack is set up, it is time to start getting all of the different trigger pads and start setting them up on the kit. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab this camera again so you can take a quick look. As you can see here, this is all set up and ready to go. You will notice your bass drum trigger again you have this set up, so if you want to have a double bass pedal, you can do that. Here is what your bass board looks like for your bass drum pedal to attach to. On the right side, you'll notice you have your two clamps. One will be for your ride cymbal arm. The other will be for the L arm for your floor tom. This is what you will be connecting your snare drum pad to. And then here on the left side, you will have one of your crash cymbals and your hi-hat. Your rack toms will eventually be attached to these two posts right here. So now that all of this is put together, let's go ahead and grab all of the different pads so we can start setting this up. All right, so now that your rack is all set up and ready to go, you will notice that that one bag that had these three clamps in it, so you have one and two, and the third one I actually have over there, you need to take two of them and set them up on either of the posts on the H-beam. These are for your two different rack toms. So 
Simply make sure that these wing nuts are loose enough that they go over top and clamp down just like so. Now, as far as setting these up is concerned, it's really user preference, but you want to make sure that these are set up in a way so when you take one of your L-arm brackets, you can insert it and allow you to rotate the handle toward you or away from you. This allows you to have that angle that your tom should be on when you are playing. Now, of course, if you like flat rack toms, you can just set it up like that and be done. So you can eyeball it. I myself actually prefer to have the post be on the inside. Some folks might actually, as I go in between them, will actually prefer to have them on the outside so they're a little bit further spaced apart. That's completely up to you how you would like to have that set up. The next step you wanna actually do is make sure that you can insert the floor tom arm. So you wanna take the one bracket that is furthest away from the center, loosen that up so you can turn it, and then insert that L arm just like so. Once again, up to you how you prefer to have this, whether you want your floor tom to be flat or angled. Once you have it in an eyeball area of where you want it to be, you can lock it in place until you actually get the rack on there. Again, as I shift over so you can see my face. Now, one thing that you want to think about and actually make a note of, all of these L arm brackets that you have here, one of them has this round puck on it per se. This is actually for your snare drum. So when you are setting this up, just make sure for your two rack toms and your floor tom, you have just the regular L arm brackets that do not have that plastic puck on it. Now, when it comes time for setting up your snare drum, once again, you have an additional clamp. It looks just like all of the other ones on this kit. And you just wanna loosen and insert like so. Now, again, this is going to be user preference, how you want this to be set up whether you want that L arm bracket to be either on your left side or your right side. I myself prefer to put this, actually, I'm going to flip it. I like to have it on the inside because once I have all of this set up, I will actually take this arm for the snare drum and swing it out just a little bit like so. This allows me to have, once my snare drum is set up, it'll be in an actual area where it feels comfortable to play. Now, remember that one piece that I showed you earlier? This one right here, it was with all of your different bass drum components. This is going to be used to attach the module to the kit itself. So you actually wanna take a drum key, make sure that the tension rod on the one side is loose enough so it can fit on top of the leg like so. And then once you have it there, you can tighten it. You don't have to tighten it all the way because you're gonna have to make some adjustments once you get that module in place. Now, from here, the next step is to actually set up for your cymbals. So again, you have three different cymbal arms here. And what you actually wanna set up is you're gonna have one short B for your ride cymbal because usually your ride cymbal is a little bit lower than your crash. The taller one will be used for your crash cymbal. And then that other short one will be used for your hi-hat. So those two clamps that you have on the left side of the kit, again, if you're setting this up for a right-handed player, the one that is furthest away from the center, that's going to be for your hi-hat. So when you take a look at these connections, you're gonna notice they're not flat like a traditional symbol. You're gonna notice they have this angle here with a 45 degree. So you want that slope to actually be facing you when you go to set this up. That way, once you have that pad set up on here, you can make adjustments to actually have that angle towards you rather than away from you. Now, I'm gonna take that longer post, I'm going to insert it in the clamp that is closer to the center of the rack, again on the left side. This will be used for my crash cymbal setup. And again, you can adjust that to place that crash cymbal wherever you would like to be once it is set up on the kit. And then finally, the very last piece here is for the ride cymbal, which gets inserted into that clamp that is closer to the center section on the right side. Now, some folks you will notice, they actually have these posts angle away from them. 
rather than straight up and down because then you can make those adjustments from here and you know that all of that will be out of your way. So I'm just going to make some minor adjustments here just to kind of get closer to where I would like it to be as far as configuration and setup is concerned. All right, so now that the rack is set up, we can finally set up all of the different paths. All right, so as I am peeking through the forest known as all of these different alarm clamps, you will notice, like I mentioned earlier, you have one pad and then three pads where the cardboard box has PDX-6. Those PDX-6s are actually your different toms. You will see they're already pre-assembled and ready to go. So all you have to do is place them on the rack. So as you can see here, like I mentioned, I like to have those, hey there, I like to have these set up closer to one another because I like to have my rack toms actually pretty close. I don't like to have them far away. Again, this is my preference. I feel like it just makes a little more sense ergonomically. And I wanna make sure that they are angled correctly. Now the very last pad is going to be, I feel like I'm Wilson from Home Improvement. If anybody remembers that show. So now that very last pad that we have right here is going to go on that L-arm bracket for your floor tom. And just looking at this, I'm probably gonna have this go a little bit further away. Because once I sit down, I will see how this looks on the kit. Okay, so that one pad that is different than the rest, that is your snare drum pad. I'm going to go like this so you can see. This is a little bit larger than the other ones because this is the PDX8 pad. So this is an eight inch pad, whereas all of the other ones are six inch pads. This is the one that you are using for your snare drum. So you will notice that when you place that on that L arm that has that round puck on it, you are now set up ready to go and you have a snare drum. So to actually adjust this a little bit further, I'm actually going to turn that snare drum rod just a little bit away like so. And then I'm actually sliding the whole thing back. So that way it's more in line with the floor tom. And let me go ahead and grab that camera so you can see from the drummer's perspective what that looks like. Okay, so looking at the kit now, you can see we have our two toms set up there. There's our ride symbol, our crash symbol, hi-hat, and then there's the connection for the brain module. And you can see here from that drummer's perspective, that's looking pretty close to a actual drum set setup. Again, with this snare drum arm, what I actually did is I actually put it out a little bit and then moved it backwards. So then that way that would be in line. So now that all of this is set up, the next step is to get the cymbal pads and put them on the kit. So now that this is set up, I can actually sit on a drum throne and start to put everything else together so we can finish this up. Now, moving on with the cymbals, you have three of the same exact pad, which is a CY5. So if I go ahead and take one of them out, you will see here, you have your trigger section here. It's just plastic on the other side. There is one input. Those are going to be for your ride, crash, and hi-hat cymbals. Now, the one thing you wanna make sure when you are looking at this, you're gonna notice that there is actually a little bit of an indentation that is going from left to right. That actually is going to go in line with the same indentation that you have on your cymbal stand here. Go ahead and place that felt on top and then your wing nut. Now, with this, this is something that a lot of people will end up doing. They tighten it all the way until they can't anymore. And that actually restricts the motion of the symbol itself. So when you are setting this up, good rule of thumb is just to make sure it's nice and secure, but this actually can move a little bit. That way it feels more like a symbol. You're gonna do the same exact thing for your crash symbol and your hi hat. Okay, so now that all of those symbols are set up and ready to go, I'm going to make some minor adjustments once again to make this feel a little more comfortable for me. So there's my hi-hat stand. Now, as far as my crash symbol is concerned, 
I want it to be in between the hi-hat and the rack tom, but not get in the way of the rack tom. So I'm just shifting it over just ever so slightly. I'm also going to raise it a good amount because that's pretty low. Cool. And then ride symbol is way off. So we'll move that. And again, this is up to you and your preference. All of these adjustments that I am making are just my preference as far as how I want my kit to be set up. And I'm all set, ready to go. So from here, all we have to do now is get the module, set it up here, and then connect everything, and we're done. All right, so now all of this is set up and pretty close to how I would set up a drum set. You wanna go ahead and take your hi-hat controller, and you are going to place that underneath your hi-hat trigger right there. You will notice that the connection for it is on the very, very bottom. Next step, let's set up the module or the brain for this whole thing. So there we have it right there. Now that additional box that's inside of it, that's what actually has your power supply as well as the snake cable. So we're gonna put both of those aside. And I'm gonna just kind of toss that over there. So how this actually connects, you're gonna notice at the bottom of it, you have this connection right here. That's what your tension rod that you have on it goes through. So you just loosen that up, remove it, you place your module in place, and then insert the tension rod until you can tighten it, and then you can make your adjustments. Now if you want, you can turn it from left to right so you can have it set up in a configuration that you feel a little more comfortable with. All right, so let's go ahead and start to connect the cables to all of the different trigger pads. So the very cool thing about Roland is that with all of these, they're already snaked together. So all you have to worry about is make one connection into the module and then everything is zip tied together. So all you have to do is go around the kit and make your connections. Now, once I get rid of all of those cable ties there, you'll notice on the one end, you have a connection that looks like an old school computer connection. That's what goes into the module over here. So actually, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna loosen this so that way we can take it off, flip it over, now the one thing you'll notice is that with these connections, the row that is a little bit longer is on the top. So you wanna take a look at this. That means that all of these wires are actually facing upwards towards the top. And then you wanna make sure that you tighten both of those screws on either side. This is going to confirm you have a solid connection for all of those teeth. Now, reinsert this back. Now here's something I really like about this Roland Snake is that the lengths all vary and they actually identify what each one is. So the one that I'm holding right here, you can see is yellow and it has HH, which stands for hi-hat. So that is actually going to go into that hi-hat connection right there. Moving down the line, you will notice that this says T1, it is blue, stands for Tom1 also known as this rack tom right here. Again, there's a connection, just push that in, you are set to go. This one down here is red. SN stands for snare, which actually conveniently connects right there. This next one here, you will see it says CR1, that stands for crash symbol number one, most likely is on the same side as your hi-hat, so I'm gonna go right up there, connect that. The next one that we have is blue, stands T2, that's Tom2, which will then connect right there. Now this one is yellow and it says HHC, which stands for hi-hat controller. And that actually connects to the hi-hat controller pedal right here. So if I place this down on the ground, I will flip this over. There we go. You can see there's a connection there. Pick up this camera so you can see a little bit better. 
So those notches are really cool because it allows you to make sure that the cable can go in the right direction. And of course, if you're left-handed, you just flip it over to the other side. Okay, next one that we have. Black says K-I-K, -K, that stands for kick or bass drum. So that's going to go there. Now this one right here, it's another green one. It has R-D, stands for ride. So we're going to connect that right over here. And then the very last one that we have is T3, stands for Tom number three. It's going to go right there. Now, you will notice that there is one additional connection. And if you look at it, it says CR2. This is for Crash 2. It has a cap on it. So if you would like, you can actually purchase an additional symbol and use this to set up a second crash symbol. So then that way you will have hi-hat, crash symbol on one side, ride symbol, followed by another crash symbol. All right, so now that the kit is assembled, we have our module there, hi-hat, crash symbol, ride symbol, our two rack toms, floor tom, and our snare drum. The very last step, is to connect a bass drum pedal. All right, so I actually have my double bass pedal I'm gonna set up so you can see that you can use a double bass pedal with this configuration. What you actually wanna do is connect this bass plate right here, and that's going to go in between the bottom and the top portion of your pedal. So the first thing I actually have to do is loosen this up a little bit and raise it just a tad. That way I can insert my bass drum pedal like so. Once that is in place, you are then going to tighten it down. Depending on the bass drum pedal that you have, you're going to have a wing nut that you just turn and tighten, or you may need to use a drum key and tighten it that way. Sometimes the connections are on the bottom. So just take a look at your bass drum pedal, see what you have. Any of that will work without an issue. Now you're gonna notice that that bass drum trigger is way too low. That's also an easy fix. Simply just loosen the connection and raise it up until the beater of your bass drum pedal actually hits that center section like so. So once you have that set up, you are good to go. You can play double bass. Of course, if you want, you can use a single pedal. It doesn't matter. Whatever you are comfortable with totally works. So you can see if you've set up other Roland kits, like say the TD-01 DMK, this one is pretty similar as far as setup is concerned. The main difference, however, is that brain module where this one is the TD-07, so you have just a few extra features. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. This kit does not come with a drum throne or a bass drum pedal, so you're gonna have to get those on your own. Now, they do not need to be Roland brand specific, just needs to be any functional working bass drum pedal and drum throne. One thing you do wanna keep in mind, however, for your bass drum pedal, you wanna make sure that the beater is a hard plastic or you flip it around so the hard plastic side is the side that is striking that trigger pad. Some folks have said over time, if you use anything that is felt, it actually deteriorates the pad and it's not as responsive. So just err on the side of caution. If you have a bass drum beater where it's felt on one side and hard plastic, just flip it around. Now, if you have any questions on setting up your Roland TD-07 DMK kit, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll try and help out any way that I can. Now, if you like this video, if you could give it a big thumbs up, that way other people could find it, I would greatly appreciate it. And while you are here, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification. That way you're notified of any additional content that gets uploaded to the channel. And that is it. Thank you so much for checking out this video on how to set up the Roland TD-07 DMK electronic kit. And until next time, see you later.